Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, thanks to a range of quality products by Excella, we can all enjoy delicious meals at home, whatever the occasion may be. From chicken kebabs to bran muffins and biryani, we've got something for everyone. Now, our very own Chef Dumi recently joined top baker and cake addict, Lamise Abrahams, in her kitchen to make a moist but oh-so-delicious Excella chocolate cake recipe. Check this out. Now a lot comes to mind when you think chocolate cake and most times people get intimidated by the amount of ingredients used to make a chocolate cake but lucky for us, Lamise Abrams, cake addict and top baker will be sharing with us a deliciously easy chocolate cake recipe that'll have you in and out of the kitchen quicker than you can say chocolate. Now Lamise, chocolate cake or chocolate yes. in general, what is it about chocolate that makes people love it so much <laughs> i think it's just that chocolate is everyone's comfort food and it never disappoints it releases all those happy endorphins mm -hmm. that just makes us want to eat it more and more i know right it just makes everyone happy and i mean on that happy note i think we might as well get started with this recipe what exactly do we need so all we're going to need today is just a mixing bowl a whisk we'll need some vanilla essence cocoa powder bicarbonate of soda caster sugar cake flour and water. I noticed you haven't used any eggs or oil in this recipe, is there a reason? It's because today we're making a chocolate cake with mayonnaise. Okay, and you've chosen the makoya of them all. Uh -huh. And what is it about mayo? Why are we using this in the recipe today? Because mayonnaise is actually a great substitute. If you've ran out of oil or you've ran out of eggs, it also makes a really delicious moist chocolate cake. I know, right? Excellent mayonnaise is perfect because it's rich, creamy and versatile, making it perfect for any technique, whether you're using it for hot or cold applications. So first off, we'll start with our excellent mayonnaise. Okay. So next up we'll add our sugar. Okay. So now we're creaming the sugar and the mayonnaise together. Next we're adding our vanilla essence. We always add vanilla especially to chocolate because vanilla enhances the flavor of chocolate. And then next up we'll add our tempered water. So we're just mixing all the wet ingredients first and then we'll add the sifted dry ingredients. First we'll start with our cocoa. I like to use a combination of Dutch chocolate and normal cocoa powder. It just gives it a really rich flavour. Another thing that makes the Excella perfect is because you've decided to use bicarb in your recipe. The chemical reaction between something very acidic and the bicarb helps with your cake. It gives it so much more volume. And then we add our flour. It's important to sift because sometimes you can have lumps, you know, because the cake flour has been standing in the store and you know when things stand they tend to become full of lumps and they become hard so it's always good just to sift it to make sure that your cake will be nice and fluffy. People get very intimidated when making cake and especially chocolate cake. What do you think people get wrong? One of the things people tend to get wrong is that they tend to over mix a cake, mm -hmm. you know? And it's very important just to mix it until it's combined and then that's it. That batter already looks so divine. I know, it does. <laughs> I mean, we hardly got any cakes in the oven because I ate the batter half the time. <laughs> so what consistency are we looking for? We're just looking for a very smooth consistency. You'll see the batter will become shiny and mm. smooth and, and that's when you know it's ready, when everything is well combined. Okay. Perfect. And how long do we bake this for? For 30 to 35 minutes on 180 degrees. Perfect. That looks fantastic. It does. It's absolutely ready to go into the oven right now. Perfect. Let's get it in there. Okay. I guess this is the perfect time to get started on our frosting. Yep, the perfect timing. Awesome stuff. So before we go too far, may I ask you please just to melt the sugar, the brown sugar and the butter for us okay, together? Sure. The reason we're melting the two together is because we want a beautiful smooth consistency to be added to the rest of these ingredients, which is cocoa powder, some icing sugar and some milk. So all I'm going to do now is just mix together our cocoa powder and our icing sugar. Now, Lamise, I know most times people would use room temperature butter, but the reason we're melting our butter here is because we want it to have that caramelly flavor. Talking about caramel, I think it's ready. All right, bring it over. 
perfect. So you can drop that in there. It actually even looks a little bit like fudge. Which yes, makes it, it does. Perfect. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, or rather, I'm going to make sure I infuse and slowly incorporate this caramel with the rest of our frosting. But we obviously want it to not be too thick. So I'm also going to mm. add some milk to that. Let me you know I haven't been to the gym in a very long time and I think this needs an electric beater. Oh girl, to me, I got you. Look, they don't call me the master breaker for nothing. Girl, you've got me working so hard that you've already got the frosting done. <laughs> These are not the cakes that we just baked. Um, obviously we need to let those ones cool down first. Um, so I've prepared these already for us so they are ready to be frosted. Is there a reason why they need to be cooled? If you place the frosting onto a hot cake, it will literally melt and the cake will fall apart. So we need it to be cool before we frost it. Wow, they look absolutely divine, but the frosting is missing, so let's do it. Hey, great, let's go. Do you have any tips and tricks? Because some people tend to get their frosting either too thick or too um, runny. What would you say people need to bear in mind when they're making okay. a frosting? Okay, it's all about the butter. It's very important that your butter is actually um, room temperature. If you have um, melted butter or if your butter is too runny, it can actually create a sloppy mess. But I mean, for this one, we actually made a caramel. So that's the difference. Okay, so the piping's done. So now we're just going to smooth it out. Lamise, on your Instagram, I've noticed that your cakes are mm -hmm. always so smooth. How do you get that right? It's just as simple as putting your metal scraper into some hot water. Just give it a good wipe. And there you go. You're definitely a master at this. Can I give it a go? <laughs> of course you can. Awesome stuff. I'm going to do the last layer. Great. Perfect. So just pipe in a circular motion all mm -hmm. around until you've reached the center. Until I've reached the center. Don't judge me, South Africa. I haven't <laughs> frosted a cake in a very long time. It's so beautiful to see a master baker in their territory doing their thing. And I see you're using edible flowers. Yes, I, I love flowers. It's like one of my tips if you want to decorate a cake and you're stuck and you don't know what to do, just add edible flowers. It adds color, it adds life, and everybody loves it. And it's always a nice conversational piece because everyone's always like, can you eat those? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Voila, we're done. Aren't you just a genius? <laughs> Thank you so much for having us in your kitchen. It's a I've pleasure. learned so much. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, South Africa, if you also want to learn more, we've replaced two ingredients with just one XLA mayonnaise to give you this deliciously decadent chocolate cake. And if you want to get your hands on it, just go to afternoonexpress.co.za for the full recipe and ingredient list.